everyone. Please stay muted. That's a lot of background. Okay. Please keep yourself muted unless you're asking a question. That's a, that's a lot of background noise to have here. Um, okay. Uh, one thing I uh, saw from uh, uh, last class is that when I uh, uh, record these, okay, uh, when I record these meetings and then I get the link from uh, Teams and post it in Canvas that some people were having uh, trouble uh, accessing that link, it would tell them that they don't have access. Um, and I asked uh, online learning about that, it would have to do with like what browser you're using and so forth. So the simplest workaround is when I get the video from Teams, I just download it and upload it to YouTube. Then definitely everybody will be able to access it there. Um, so I'll just keep doing that. So um, so in so after class, shortly after class in Canvas, um, you'll see the link to the video of this uh, in 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 YouTube. Okay. Um, well, my desktop is making a lot of noise, so I'm going to mute it too. Okay. Um, now, um, I want to take a look at uh, what's happening in uh, Pearson. I know some people have had some difficulty uh, getting access. Um, okay. Um, and sometimes now and then it gives even new trouble. Um, but I want to check on how many of you have uh, managed to get in. Okay, uh, 31 people, um, but there's still eight. Uh, if, if you um, have tried to get access to uh, Pearson and you've had any difficulty, please contact me directly. Um, so we, we do have a contact at Pearson who is able to uh, help um, resolve certain things instead of having to wait for their god awful support chat. Um, if a, if our first assignment is not due until um, Monday, uh, the, uh, the 24th. Um, so hopefully well before then, like um, we can have uh, everybody up and running. OK, um, now what I'm going to do is uh, just to make sure that we uh, stay on track uh, with what material has to be covered. I do have some uh, yesterday I covered problems from section 1.1, the first assignment. Um, I'm going to look at problems from section 1.2 today, but there are not many of them. So there should be some time um, that I'll uh, allocate at the uh, toward the end of class for any uh, questions that anyone has about um, whatever homework problems you have going on so far. Um, OK, so I'm going to share screen here. OK. All right, so um, the last time we were looking at um, using row operations or operations on equations to eliminate certain variables from certain equations so that we could uh, solve a system. Um, so here's an example uh, of one of these systems of linear equations uh, that we were working with last time. And uh, certainly it's quite cumbersome to write out systems of linear equations like this. So what we're going to be doing from this point forward is implicitly representing a system of equations such as this one by a matrix such as this one. So what we have here is um, all, all the uh, coefficients that are multiplying x1, x2, x3. Um, 
are entries of a matrix. So first column is uh, coefficients of x1, second column coefficients of x2, third column coefficients of x3. Um, so the coefficient uh, matrix is these first three columns here. Then whatever right hand side that you have, so in this example, all zeros, um, we tack on to the matrix as of an extra column. So this matrix uh, that we have here that represents the entire system of equations, left side and right side, is called the augmented uh, matrix. Um, so when we perform row operations on these equations to try to eliminate variables, we're just going to be performing those same row operations on the matrix, um, since that'll accomplish the same thing and, and it's a lot easier from a writing standpoint, uh, because this, this has all the information we need about uh, the, the uh, system of equations. And of course, any operation you perform must be applied to both sides. So having a right side as an additional column uh, facilitates um, uh, that. OK, um, so, so this is the notation that we'll be using to work with uh, systems of linear equations from this point on. But sometimes it can be helpful for, for particular problems to go back and forth uh, between one representation or the other uh, for an understanding of what kind of what is the underlying system of equations uh, that you're working with. OK, so. Um, so now. Um, when we are performing row operations on a matrix, um, what is the goal? Well, the goal, as established last time, was to uh, reduce the system to um, what I refer to as an upper triangular form. So now I'm going to get more formal about that. Um, there are two uh, forms of a matrix that we're going for uh, when we perform row operations or you know, Gaussian elimination. Um, so there's uh, so the simpler form is echelon form, and then there's also reduced uh, echelon form. So uh, so so what are these? I mean the definitions are laid out here, but um, so first of all, um, when we perform row operations, sometimes it happens. We've seen it happen last time, where you might get a row of entirely zeros. Um, so. We must have rows like that. Any row that's entirely zeros uh, must be at the bottom. Um, and uh, so sometimes it may be necessary to interchange rows uh, to make that happen. Um, now, um, if you look at rows from these examples um, that are um, like that are non-zero. Um, so here we have, there's a, uh, what's of importance is the first non-zero entry in each row, like these ones that I'm pointing out here. Um, so the first or leading non-zero entry in any row is called a pivot. Um, so pivots are gonna be of a particular importance to us for writing down the solution of uh, systems of linear equations. Um, OK, and um, all right. so what we have to have here is uh, each pivot cannot have a pivot uh, directly above it. It must be strictly to the right. So they have to proceed in this uh, this fashion right here. Okay. Um, so that so these are also two rules with um, echelon form um, that uh, so zeros at the bottom uh, and pivots have to be ordered from left to right as you go from one row to the next. <clears throat> um, so as an example, uh, if you look at these three examples here, um, so this one, uh, matrix C, um, is not in echelon form. Why? Because we have this row of zeros um, that's not at the bottom. So, we, uh, so to get this in echelon form, it would be necessary to perform a row interchange, take this row of zeros, the second row, move it to the bottom. Um, now, um, so what's nice about echelon form, um, okay. 
Um, okay. So, so once you get a matrix in echelon form, it allows the system to be solved by substitution. For example, the backward substitution that I showed you last time, where the last equation you can solve immediately. Once you solve that, you substitute that unknown into the equation above it, and you go up from there. Um, so once you have it in echelon form, um, then you can do that. Um, and having zero rows at the bottom is, is, a, is a, a convenience um, that you're focusing just on those, those non-zero rows. Okay. Um, okay. Now, what is reduced echelon form? Well, after you get the matrix in echelon form, uh, reduced echelon form takes it a step further. Um, that, uh, so if, um, every pivot has to be one. So if you could have a pivot element, like here, all the pivot elements are equal to one, but echelon form, the pivot does not have to be one. It could be, like this could be two, for instance. But to get reduced echelon form, you must divide that row by two in that case to make this pivot element uh, equal to one. So that's one condition. Also, um, anytime you have a pivot element, um, it must be the only non-zero entry in its column. So this matrix B here is, it is in echelon form. It is not in reduced echelon form. Why? Look at this column right here. This one that I'm highlighting, that's the pivot element of the second row. Why? Because it's the leading non-zero entry in its row. But look, there's a one above it. Um, so, um, so that disqualifies B from being in reduced echelon form. What I would have to do is perform another row operation. Like if I take this row, the second row, and subtract it from the first, then all these entries, these three here in the top row, those would be zero. Um, and then, um, uh, so, so that would help anyway to put it in re reduced echelon form. Um, that would that alone would not be enough. This entry right here, the last entry in the second row, also has to be removed. Um, so this matrix, matrix A, this is in reduced echelon form. So every pivot element here, 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 all of them are equal to one. Um, and uh, in each case, it's the only non-zero entry in its row. Now, why is reduced echelon form helpful? Um, so then you can solve a system immediately. Um, so for example, um, this equation right here, this would be like, you know, X4 is equal to something like from a right hand side. So we could say immediately what X4 is equal to. Um, X3 um, has no pivot element corresponding to it. It's called a free variable. But then I look at what I could say from this um, system is uh, actually what I'll do is I'm going to write down a system of equations that it corresponds to so you can more clearly see. Um, okay. All right, and here I'm I'm not treating this as an augmented matrix. This is the coefficient side of the system, and then there's something else on the right hand side, and I'll just fill in something for that. Um, so for the first row, I'd have one times X one. And then I don't have an X two because there's a zero here. And then I have X three and there's nothing else in the first equation. And then I have some right hand side B one. Doesn't matter what it is. Second row, I have X two and X three only. So it would be two. And then third row, I only have X four. Um, so here we have system reduced echelon form. So now what I can do is say, so well X4, that's given away. X4 is equal to B3. Um, X3 has no 
if there's no pivot in column three, so X3 is a free variable. In other words, you can set it to any value you want and still solve a system. Then X2 can be solved for in terms of whatever you choose for X3. And then the same thing for X1. Um, so once it's in reduced echelon form, any unknown that does not have a pivot element for it, the X3 in this case, that one is declared free. Um, and then all other variables, it's really quick to solve for them in terms of any free variables that you have. So that's why we like reduced echelon form, because it, it immediately exposes what the solution is. <clears throat> But the thing to keep in mind is these are the conditions for echelon and reduced echelon form. Um, someone have a okay, uh, question? Okay. Okay. When you were doing we the echelon up here, up here. Um, you can only uh you got your like X2 and X1 variables based on where the ones were. Like, yes. in, okay, so where did you get your X4 variable at the bottom? Uh, from, from this fourth column. I know, but like in the, in the first row, you had the first one and the third one. So you knew you had X1 and X. Never mind, I see. Yeah, so. Um, I'll, 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 I'll write it down for everybody. Um, um, entry in column J corresponds uh, to the unknown XJ. Um, so the IJ entry is the coefficient of XJ in the IF. Uh, equation. Uh, so that's how it works in, in, in general. So rows correspond to equations. Columns correspond to unknowns. Questions for anyone else before I go to the next? Oh, put your hand down. OK, unless you have another question. But, um, the thing is that, um, so since you refer to rows for equations and then uh, columns for unknowns, and you know, uh, in a non-mathematical setting, um, I often see it where people will refer to rows going vertically um, or just getting Rows, thinking of rows and columns differently than how I've just described them for a matrix, and, I've, and as a mathematician, I find that infuriating. But even just being anal retentive. Um, okay. Now, um, so here we have uh, a matrix. This is a full matrix. Every entry uh, non-zero. So what I'm going to take you through here is um, the whole process of reducing this matrix to reduced echelon form. Uh, once that's done, we'll find out which variables are uh, um, uh, have pivots, in, like uh, so, so. So which columns have, have uh, pivots in them? Um, and uh, so, so like which of these entries will be a pivot entry, and which columns do they go in? So that'll tell us which are pivot variables and free variables. So free variables, you can pick it to be whatever you want. Pivot variables are solved for in terms of, of a free variables. Um, if you do not have any free variables, which does happen, um, then that means either you have a unique solution um, or there might be uh, no solution. If the, uh, for example, the system is inconsistent. Okay, so now we'll work on this matrix. I'm going to put this on a new page. Okay, so first the answer from First problem. 
Okay. Um, so here we need to perform row operations on this matrix. So like last time, we proceed systematically um, going from uh, left to right. So we're going to eliminate all entries in the first column uh, below this one right here. So we have to perform row operations on the uh, second row and uh, third row. Um, so what I'll do is we have two problems of a similar form where this literally is asking for the same thing. So I'll take you through this one and then I'll see how you all can do uh, with this next one. OK, so the. First row operation. Uh, we look at the ratio of entries, uh, so four is the one we want to get rid of. One is the entry that we're going to use to get rid of it. So a ratio of a two will be four. So row two is equal to um, itself minus. I don't put that in math mode. Um, it's equal to itself minus four times R1. So then if I go ahead and show you the re result of that. OK, so that's what happens in this case, that uh, that's the correct multiple to make that entry equal to zero. And then these entries are affected by that uh, row operation. So now we do the same thing to get rid of this five down here. So we're going to take um, five times the first row and subtract that. Uh, from the uh, third row and make that entry zero. Um, and that gives us this. So, so now the first column is finished. So now we uh, move on to the next. Uh, so right now, we're, we're, the idea is we're first trying to get this into echelon form as an intermediate step. Once we do that, then we'll continue row operations to get it to reduced echelon form. So now uh, we move to the second column. This is the only entry you know, below the main diagonal that we need to get rid of. So we look at the ratio of entries again. It's going to be four thirds. So the row operation will perform. So third row will be equal to itself minus four thirds times row two. And what we see here, we have an, a row that's entirely zeros. Okay. Um, now, at this point, this matrix meets all the conditions, at least for echelon form, but not reduced echelon form. Uh, so any zero rows, entirely zero rows are at the bottom. So that's one criterion. Um, also, if we look at the leading non-zero entry in each row. We only have this one here and this minus three here. Um, so this is strictly to the right of the one above it. So it has that upper triangular nature, uh, that, that kind of structure. So uh, that's the other condition for echelon form. So we're getting there. We just have to, um, but, but there's two things we have to do. We have to make all, here our pivot entries are this one here and this minus three. They all must be equal to one to qualify for reduced echelon form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this row, divide it by minus three. So once that happens, at least now all of the pivot entries will be equal to one. So we're almost there. The only condition left is here we have this pivot element in the second column. It is not the only non-zero entry in its column. We have to get rid of this two right here. So same idea, we look at the ratio of entries, it's two. So now we're going to have row operations aiming up rather than down like before. Um, so now I'm going to use the second row to work on the first row. So row one will be equal to itself minus two times row two. And 
Um, and this is what it gives me. Um, so now, um, so the Nava matrix is in reduced echelon form and meets uh, all of our criteria. Okay. Um, and the pivot entries are these. So the 1, 1 entry is the leading non-zero entry in the first row. The 2, 2 entry is the leading non-zero entry in the second row. Both of them are equal to 1. And they're both the only non-zero entries in their respective columns. So the um, pivot columns are uh, columns one and two. So these are the things that uh, um, my lab asks for in their answer. So that's why I'm putting this information uh, here. So what this means is if this were a part of a system of linear equations with unknowns like x1, x2, x3, x4, x3 and x4 would be free variables you would solve for x1 and x2 in terms of x3 and x4. Uh, the other possibility might be maybe this is an augmented matrix and there are only three unknowns, x1, x2, x3, and these are the values from the right-hand side. So then x3 would be a three variable, and then I would solve for um, x1 and x2 in terms of a chosen value of uh, x3. And then these right-hand side values would play a role in that solution. Um, there is no context in this problem, so um, it's ambiguous as to what where this matrix came from because you don't have the underlying system of equations. We're just practicing row operations on a matrix, but it, it could mean uh, either thing. Um, so before we try this out on another matrix, um, does anyone have a question about what happened with the, with the first one? Yes. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. It was echoing really bad. Uh, why don't you? Why, why did we stop putting like the right hand columns like after the equal signs? Oh, why is uh, that not included? Uh, I mean, like 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 these. Well, like we have the B one, B two, and B three on there, but it's not like the when the first one that you showed us before you flipped to this section, there was like a whole column of like the after the equal signs. Oh, like right? that. Yes. OK, um, yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so the thing is, for a notational shorthand, we don't include the equal signs. Um, so. OK, so th this is what I was talking about at the end of a previous problem. Uh, it all depends on where the matrix came from. Um, so you might be working on a matrix that is an augmented matrix like this one, uh, where it's understood that the last column ha contains it consists of a right hand side values. And in that case, like the equals is kind of implied. Um, or the matrix that you're working on might not be an augmented matrix. It might be a matrix that only comes from the left side of a system of equations. And the row operations you perform um, are of the same kind. Um, so, so, if you, so I was just making that point in back in this problem that in this problem we were just handed a matrix. Um, we were not told whether um, uh, it, this, this, we were, there was no indication that this was an augmented matrix coming from some system. So because we're, there's no indication given, then what we're assuming is that these, this is really just the left side of a system. And these, car, these columns, these four columns correspond to unknowns, x1, x2, x3, x4. OK, so it's after the, the right side is just kind of irrelevant right now? Um, yeah. Um, that you know, this, this matrix could be used as part of a system, and then you'd have to supply the right-hand side values. Uh, they just don't play a role in this problem. Um, okay. Yeah, and um, that's actually a very important point because it actually happens in um, like real applications where it is necessary to solve a, uh, systems of equations many times where the matrix on the left side, from the left side, the coefficient matrix is the same in every system but only the right-hand side is changing. 
So in that case, it's actually beneficial to perform elimination, like reduce to echelon form or reduce echelon form, working only on the left side, and you save that information and then perform those same row operations on whatever right side you're given, which there might be multiple ones up. Um, so, um, so, so, so that's why we, it, can be, it can be convenient to work with an augmented matrix representing whatever system you're given, but um, it's not always the best idea. Um, so, but since there are some problems where we do work with augmented matrices, I just want to make a point with these two problems, problems two and three. So these, these will also be problems two and three in the homework. Um, so I'll just make a note here. Um, Not an augmented matrix in this problem. Um, and the same um, and same thing with problem threes. Um, and the reason why I'm, I have to tell you that and uh, is that um, because it's not an augmented matrix, all four of these correspond to unknowns, x1, x2, x3, x4. That means that any of these columns have a potential to be pivot columns. Um, whereas something from the right hand side of the system, that would not be a pivot column. Right. So, uh, so, so these two are not augmented, whereas in problem four, that's coming up later, here you're actually specifically told it's an augmented matrix. So the best thing to do is if you're given a matrix uh, to work with, it should either be made clear in the problem that it is an augmented matrix. If not, assume it's not. Other questions? Oops, that's why it's so zoomed out all of a sudden. Okay, let me make that bigger. Okay. All right, so now we have a similar matrix. We have to do the same thing. We need to get it to um, reduced echelon form. Okay. So, um, what row operations should we start with to get this toward at least echelon form before we move on to reduce? Anybody? You multiply you multiply root two. Two. I mean, you subtract R. Row two equals row two minus two times row one. Yes, very good. All right, so that'll be our first row operation. Row two equals itself minus two row one. And when we carry that out, Okay, um, but this is the result, so that entry is eliminated. By coincidence, that entry is eliminated too. Uh, we'll have to deal with that later. Um, okay, that's a start. Now what? We still have to finish off a first column. You do row three is equal to row three minus four row one. Uh, yes. Okay, so that will take care of the first column. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so now we're at this point. 
and we want to move on to the second column. But here we have an unfortunate wrinkle to deal with um, because um, the way it's looking now for uh, echelon form is um, you know we have here this um, pivot element for the second row because it's the first entry in the row that's not zero. Here we have the pivot element for the third row is in the second position. That violates the condition for echelon form. So each pivot element has to be strictly to the right of a pivot element from a row above. Here it's going backwards. So this is one thing we did not have to deal with last time that we must deal with now. We must swap row two and row three. So let's get that matrix up on the board. Okay. That's strange. Why do I have a oh I see what happened. Okay. Um all right. So now this matrix can be said to be in uh, echelon form. Okay. Um, but not because what we have here is here the pivot elements. Uh, so we're going in the right direction as we go from top row to bottom row. The pivot elements are ordered from left to right. Uh, so that's that's what we need there. Um, now we have to get this to reduced echelon form. So these rows have to be scaled. We have to divide them both by um, minus three. OK, so then we get that matrix. So now all of the uh, pivot entries are equal to one. So that's one step closer to reduced echelon form. Um, but we're not done yet. Uh, like here we look at uh, this pivot element in the second column, this one also in the third column. They are not the only non-zero entries in their respective columns. We have to make sure that they sit by themselves in those columns. Um, so, what would be a sensible row operation to perform to help make these this, these two ones here be only non-zero entries in their respective rows? Uh, sorry, columns. There's actually more than one right answer. So these three entries above the ones that we need to get rid of. Are you asking for the next row op operation? Yes. Oh, um, R1 minus 2 R2. OK, um, so that would have the effect of eliminating that. Um, but what I'm going to do here is what I'm going to suggest is when we're taking care of these entries that are above the diagonal, we actually proceed from right to left. So. So here, what you did was you targeted this entry. Um, but let's instead target the entries in here first, because um, uh, so, 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 so just as, as we have a systematic elimination procedure where we're eliminating entries down here, we go from left to right. Here, when we're taking care of entries above, we go from right to left. So with that in mind, um, we'll be raw operation in that case. If we're going to go from, from, sorry, from right to left,
row two will be equal to row two minus four, row three? Yes. So we'll, so we'll take four times this row, subtract it from this row. Um, yes, so right to left and uh, an interest of having a systematic order like from you know, bottom to top. Um, so row two is itself. Minus four times the third row. Okay. Okay. And then um, the same thing, eliminating the entry above it. Row one is equal to itself times four times again, row three. So uh, row three is used to eliminate anything in this column that we need to do away with. Okay. All right, so now we're here. So now the third column is taken care of. And then the row operation that you suggested earlier, we can do now um, and uh, get rid of that too. So um, because we're, since we're going from right to left, We'll move leftward and get rid of that entry. OK. Um, oh, we need to put that in there. OK. All right, so now it is in reduced echelon form. Um, so all the pivots are equal to 1. Each pivot element is the only non-zero entry in its own column. Um, so these three entries, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, uh, those are the pivot positions. Um, and what Pearson actually, what my lab actually does is get, it makes a multiple choice question. It puts the uh, proposed pivot elements in bold and you pick out the right one. Uh, so it's, it's where these ones are. Um, and therefore, the pivot columns are the columns in which those pivot elements or pivot positions reside, columns one, two, and three. So. Since this is assumed not to be an augmented matrix, your four, the unknown for your fourth column, X4, that would be a free variable. And uh, so if you had all of this equal to something over here, you could solve for X1, X2, X3 in terms of uh, the value of X4. So questions about reduction to reduced echelon form. So here we have a uh, system of equations. Uh, so here we were told it's an augmented matrix. It's given in a problem. So now it's understood that this last column has a right-hand side values, which in this case are all zero, but not all problems will have that. Um, so, uh, so now you're uh, trying to reduce uh, uh, this matrix to reduced echelon uh, form, or actually um, it would be enough to um, bring it to echelon form, and you can still solve a system that way. You don't have to go all the way to reduced. Um, and besides, uh, all it's asking for is what is the solution of a system? Um, so what happens here is, in the interest of time, we'll go for the same kind of row operations as before. So here we look at the ratio of entries, it's two. So we're going to take row two as itself minus two, row one. OK, and notice what happened here. You got a row of entirely zeros. Um, look at the coefficients here. Each coefficient in the second row is twice that of the first row. So um, that was about to wipe out this entire row. Um, and then we also work on row three in the same way. So four times row one 
is subtracted from row three. And what happens in that case, it's the same thing. So now the whole matrix is wiped out except for the first row. So what that means here is um, the only pivot elements is this one, the two. Now we're not required to bring this matrix to reduced echelon form. We don't have to divide this row by two to make this pivot element one. We have enough information here to solve a system. So what happens here is that's your one and only pivot element. Uh, that is your one and only pivot column. So X1 is the only variable that is not free. These two, X2, X3 from the second and third columns, those are your free variables. So my solution will not assign a value to X2 or X3. They'll just be left as X2 and X3. So what you do is any pivot variables we have, in this case, it's only X1, we solve for it in terms of whatever free variables uh, that we have. So for that, it's helpful to look back at um, what is the first equation? 2x1 minus 7x2 plus 5x3 is equal to 0. So now what you can do is you just solve this equation. For x1. So all I did here was just rearrange this. Isolate x1 gives you this. So that's your answer. This is your x1 in terms of x2 and x3. And we just say that these two are free variables. So, so this is a system of equations that has infinitely many solutions. So I can pick any numbers whatsoever for x2 and x3, then solve for x1 in terms of them. That's a solution um, to the system of equations. So once you bring a matrix at least to echelon form, doesn't have to be reduced echelon form, echelon form just echelon form, you'll know which are your pivot variables and which are your free variables. Um, so then you solve for your pivot variables in terms of your free ones. So questions about how, how that one play out. So normally when you have a system of equations like this, you have the same number of equations as you do unknowns. So we have three of each. Most times that system will have a unique solution, but this is one example where it did not. Um, that it, anything's possible. It may have no solution, it might have infinitely many solutions. Um, so by contrast, the last problem we're gonna look at also has three equations, three unknowns, and it will have of a unique solution. So here we have an application problem. And there's a lot to digest here, but I'll uh, highlight the important, the essential points here. That you're given these three data points. So points in the X, Y plane. And the goal here is to come up with a polynomial that passes through all three points. Now, uh, from lower level classes, you're familiar with the problem of if you're given two points, find the equation of a line that passes through those points. So here we just take it one degree higher. Two points determines a line. Three points will determine a quadratic function. So if you have three points in the plane, and I want to emphasize that are not collinear, then there is a unique parabola that passes through those points. So the idea is um, we're looking for a function of this form, a quadratic function. Now a quadratic function is determined entirely by its three coefficients for your constant linear quadratic terms. So these are unknowns, a0, a1, a2. Um, so from all of this, we have a system of equations. All we're doing here is we're taking this function as p of t, and we're plugging in t equal one, two, three, 
And then on the right side, we have the values that we're supposed to get. So we plug in t equals one, we should get 12. We plug in t equals two in here, we should get 17. We plug t equals three into this function, we should get 18. So that's how we get this system of equations uh, right here. So now uh, what the problem is really asking for is solve this system of equations for a0, a1, and a2. And once you have them, then your quadratic function is determined. So here we have a system of equations written out, but um, for uh, purpose of solving a system, we want to express this as an augmented matrix. So I'll write out what the augmented matrix is. So here, whatever is multiplying a zero goes in here. What are first column? Coefficients of a1 go in the second column. Coefficients of a2, which are these values squared, go in the third column. And then our, our right hand side values go in the fourth column. Now, um, this matrix actually has a name. Uh, not, not the entire matrix, but the. Uh, so the, if we just focus on this part, the first three columns, they come from the left side of the system. It's called a Vandermond matrix. Um, four of a point, uh, T equals one, two, and three. Now, how you identify a Vandermond matrix? First column is all ones. Second column are whatever T values you have. Third column would be uh, those same T values squared. And, and uh, higher order Vandermond matrices would have more points and they'd have those points raised to higher and higher powers. Um, so it's very useful for finding um, or for a, a problem of it's called polynomial interpolation. Uh, polynomial interpolation, and that's what's mentioned here in the problem, is when you find a polynomial that passes through given points. So anytime you're trying to find a polynomial that passes through given points, you're solving a system of equations involving a Vandermond matrix. So that's just a little bit of uh, trivia for you. Um, but now what we want to do, okay, I'm going to put this problem on its own page also. is work on this matrix like before. So, um, and we see here, to get rid of entries in this first column, the ratio is one in every case. So we're gonna subtract row one from row two, subtract row one from row three. Okay, so that is gotten rid of, and we do that again for the third row. Okay, um, so now the first column is taken care of, and what do we? Do? What's uh, what's left to uh, get this matrix at least into echelon form? What row operation? Row three is equal is to equal row two times, I mean, row three is equal to row two minus two row, row three is equal to row three minus two row two. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's hard to do this, it gets so echoey when I'm talking and it makes me like not be able to speak. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, this whole situation is finding out just how incapable our technology really is uh, when we really need to rely on it. Um, yes, row three is equal to itself uh, times row two. Okay, so then, carry that out. Okay, so now the matrix is in, um, uh, so look at the problem statement again. Um, is in 
echelon form. And if we want to um, – and just because we want to solve a system, of course, the system the solution is a lot easier to extract if you go all the way to reduced echelon form. And if I work with echelon form and solve a system of equations this way, that would be equivalent to the work involved in getting um, – reduce echelon form anyway. So it's really all equivalent. Um, so we'd make a, all the pivot entries equal to one just by dividing that last row by two. And then um, these entries up above a diagonal, we have to get rid of those in order to get to um, reduced echelon form, which would immediately give us a solution. Um, but before going any further, what we can see here is that we have three equations and we have three pivot elements in the one, one, two, two, three, three positions. Anytime you have that, that immediately tells you you will have a unique solution. Um, so if I bring this all the way to reduced echelon form, we're actually going to see the solution right in front of us. So, uh, like for instance, we can already see from here. Uh, the last unknown, remember, it's A0, A1, A2. A2 is equal to minus 2. We can see that right away. Um, and if we continue with row operations, um, row 2 is equal to itself times 3 row 3. We look at the ratio again. Um, so that's eliminated. This immediately ex exposes the second unknown, A1, has to be 11. Um, but there's a little more work to do in this first row to get us all the way to reduced echelon form. And that will tell us the first unknown, which is A0. So here we have these ones to get rid of. So I got to subtract uh, row three from here to get rid of this zero. Um, and Last row operation, row one. Is itself minus row two to get rid of this element. And there you have it. So here, when you have reduced echelon form and there are no free variables, every uh, column from your left side of your system is a pivot column. The right-hand side is the solution. So we can say A0 is the first um, right-hand side value. A1 is the second one. A2 is the third one. Um, so now those are the coefficients of your polynomial. So A0 is a constant coefficient. A1 is a coefficient from a linear term. And then a minus 2 is a coefficient of a quadratic term. So this is your function that passes through those three points. So if I plug in, for instance, uh, t equals one, then I will get 12. If I plug in t equals two, I'll get 17. If I plug in t equals three, I will get 18. So it satisfies all of those uh, conditions. Okay. All right. So any questions about uh, what happened here? Yes. Um, okay. okay. I understand I, everything that just happened. Um, but when you, you get A0, A1, and A2 just from the um, question itself, right? Uh, from the what itself? Like the question where it, where it gave you like the paragraph to figure out what to do with it. Um, yeah. So yeah. As far as what, what, yeah. As far as where they go, yes, that comes from the problem. Okay. And so, I know that you for like a one. Okay. Never mind. I missed that. I see what happened. Okay. You automatically just plug one in for like the a zero because you have no time. Um. Right. Oh wait. Um. Yeah. For yeah. For evaluating this. Yeah. So a zero is what goes here. Yeah, yeah, so A0, A1, A2 just go in for these coefficients. Gotcha.
Okay. Um, floor is open for questions about anything, like for instance, stuff from last time, or if you've already working on the first homework and had any difficulty there. Any questions at all? Just out of morbid curiosity, I'm going to See what is happening with um, the uh, first assignments. Okay, well, a number of people have at least been working on the first homework, and there's some of you who have gotten it done. That's good. Um, okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, so if anyone um, uh, still has questions and uh, would prefer not to ask in front of the entire class, um, uh, feel free to stick around. Uh, everyone else um, is welcome to leave. And um, I will stop recording at this point. <laughs>